Hey, we're in the Dare County Airport Museum, which is located in the terminal building at the Dare County Airport up here in the north end of Roanoke Island. Our mission of the airport is to tell the history of aviation in Dare County, less the Wright brothers, which we leave to the Park Service and the federal government. As the airport came up to its 50th anniversary, they decided to make a pretty big deal of it. They put together a temporary museum for the 50th anniversary in 1992, and over about the next four years, formalized it into these two rooms here. We have two display rooms that cover the period of the 1920s and 30s, which is pretty much the barnstorming era of aviation. The growth of the airport from a temporary facility at Skyco to uh, a full-fledged airport built here in Manio. We tell that story through a number of authentic artifacts. In other words, we don't just collect and display anything, but probably over 95% of the artifacts and material in this museum are authentic to the time and the period here at Dare County Airport. We have displays of uniforms, equipment, artifacts, a number of documents, particularly detailing the service of the Civil Air Patrol, Coastal Patrol Base 16, which is a big part of the history at this airport. We have, and I always like to talk about, about five areas of the museum. As you come in along airport roads, you'll see a state historical marker. Then as you come in on the airport here, we've got a granite monument to the Civil Air Patrol people that flew out of here, and a stone for the county commissioners that founded the airport. You get into the lobby here, we've got some planes hanging from the ceiling that were models of planes that flew from here. And then you come back into the museum itself, which is two rooms. One room we call the Operations of the Dave Driscoll Room is really dedicated to Dave. Dave Driscoll is what we call our local barnstormer. Dave really was the face of aviation in Dare County in the 20s and 30s, uh, very well known throughout the Park Service. When the war started, he went to work for Kellett Autogyro as a test pilot. After the war, he came back here and started up his air service again, became the airport manager. He was integral in getting this airport functioning again. Unfortunately, he continued as a test pilot for Kellett, and in 1949, the aircraft he was testing crashed and took him with it. Photographs on the wall, starting from almost when he was a kid, around to his death. As you look at those photographs, you'll see a lot of local names. There's midgets, mans, bass knights, tillets, all up there on those photos, local people and local involvement in aviation at the time. You come into the other room, the main room, and this is really focused on World War II. When the war started for us uh, in 1941, the Germans sent over some submarines to shoot up the convoys transiting the, the coast here. That's a story that's well told down in the graveyard of the Atlantic Museum on Hatteras Island. The Civil Air Patrols flew patrols up and down, effectively a convoy escort. The fact that there was an airplane flying over made submariners nervous, so that helped. They're also great at spotting wrecks, derelicts, people needing rescue, et cetera, et cetera. Now, understand that most of these were two-seat airplanes. They were flying 20 to 40 miles offshore with two people in them with fairly spotty radio communication and a single-engine airplane, and if the engine quits, you could take it from there. And in fact, a number of pilots throughout the Civil Air Patrol, including two from this base, were in fact lost in accidents at sea. In a lot of the coastal patrol bases in the country, Folks would come to that base from all over, several different states, etc. North Carolina was extremely fortunate. Over 95% of the people that served here were Tar Heels. They came in here, they brought their own aircraft. 
They signed an agreement that said the government would pay some fuel and maintenance and cover them on insurance and that, but they brought their own stuff. They came from home to Dare County, North Carolina. They built their barracks, they built their own hangars, and they did that as volunteers. And it's kind of the spirit of a country that comes together on something. And that's an important story in that. There's two display cases full of Civil Air Patrol uniforms. These are authentic uniforms worn by people that served here on the base in Civil Air Patrol World War II. The next two displays are artifacts from the Coastal Patrol base itself. We've got flags, we've got ration books, we've got various certificates, uh, photographs, uh, uniform artifacts. And then we shift to the Naval Air Station and we have three cases here that talk about the Naval Air Station. One case is pretty much VF-17, the Corsair Squadron. They went to the South Pacific and became the highest scoring fighter squadron in the war. One of the members of that squadron was Ray Beecham from Kitty Hawk. He was known as the Kitty Hawk Kid. And he also scored the first victory attributed to that squadron on that first deployment. The second case is the air base here and a couple other squadrons, many of which were populated by local people. And then we have one case which has some of the uniforms and things from Ray Beecham, who was in VF-17. In the center of the room is a portrait of how the base looked in World War II. The model in the middle of it was built by the Navy to show this is what the base looks like. On each side of that, we have uniforms and documentation, effectively a memorial to the two flyers, Frank Cook and Julian Cooper, who lost their lives in December 1942. One last thing that's in here is a table full of reference material. We've tried to organize binders of information showing the early years of Dave Driscoll, how the airport was formed, all the various county documents and things and the processes they went through. The Intel Journal, photographs of the members that were here so you can identify the hometown, the, the people. And then we've also got uh, war diaries and other things of some of the squadrons that served here. The importance of the museum is first off, it is local history here. It's local to Air County. It's local to North Carolina. The quality of this display is just basically out of sight. For a small airport museum, the county and the airport did a great job of putting together a very pleasing display. It ties to the graveyard of the Atlantic Museum uh, down on Hatteras with the tie of the Battle of the Atlantic. In terms of the Civil Air Patrol itself, this is one of the better collections of material and display that the public can get to. It's a fascinating little museum and one that the county should be proud of. If you go any other place and you look around and say, gee, that's not near as nifty as our own little museum here. The credit goes to Harry Bridges and a lot of other people back in the early 90s who put this thing together and the county who supported it.